so welcome to the podcast. Quarter past four, I am one-fifth of your host, Robert Let's Swift, go. and I got the squad with me here today again on a deep segment. I got one half of the Twin Towers, I got my boy Scott on the Ranger. We got the new cameraman in the back, my boy Copper the Don. What's up? What's up? <laughs> What's up? <laughs> got the, the librarian here, Dolo Dixon. And I got the creator himself, Doc Smurf, so uh, we're right here to engage on a... Uh, a deep session, so this topic might take us to a deeper, deeper place than before, and this is only our second episode in, so hopefully you guys are on the ride with us and you enjoy it. Always hit us up, hit us up on, uh, what is it, SoundCloud, Facebook, uh, Twitter, anywhere you can find us, you know, just uh, Instagram, YouTube, Instagram, YouTube. You know, just interact with us, let us know your feedback, so um, obviously we are, we all mourn the loss of one of the, I would say a great hip-hop legend. Um, the late great Nipsey Hussle passed away uh, March, I believe it was March 31st. Uh, sad time for hip hop, sad time for life in general. I mean, like, a lot of people had him as the Tupac of this generation, and I, 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 will, I will put him there as well. So um, we're going we're gonna to dive into that topic and discuss um, the after effects of that passing of such a great individual and such a great person. So. Um, uh, first of all, I can do is a moment of silence, you know, just for him and his family, and all, of, and all of us, just the support system for him as well. So. so yeah, uh, back into it. Um, that's the most I can say. Uh, rest in paradise to such a prolific and uh, great person as well. So, let's stop this topic off. It's always obviously a tough. Thing to talk about, so I don't even know where to start. So, um, how we're we gonna dive into this topic? How did he impact you guys? His music, his message, what he was trying to do. That's a good question, man. Gee, man, you, man, you were natural. <laughs> man, man, uh, gee, um, do I want to go first? I guess I'll go first. Go ahead, I, I listen to him. I guess go <clears> to <throat> all of us. Me and uh, me and cameraman here. Listen to him the most, I guess. It's not even your brother man. <laughs> is, he, you want, is he you want the government or you want the Yo, cop of the dog, the cop of the wife, come on, man. Uh <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um on a serious note, like I mean for me what he uh, meant to me, I've been listening listening to his music from like his early mixtapes. Bullets ain't got no name. Yeah, but one, two Yeah, all of his projects. I mean like I've Followed like his whole look, mar marathon um, and all that stuff, but I mean, for me, every time I listened to his music, I felt the grind, I felt the motivation, I felt the passion in what he was doing. You could hear the progression. Yeah, pretty much. And um, I, I think he just motivated everyone, mm -hmm. not just from his community, <clears throat> um, LA itself, but just in general. Like, I'd say not when he started, but once people started to see the to evolution. Understand of what he started to do. Okay. Yeah. Once they started to see the blueprint and pretty much once he started to show and prove, people started to get it. They started to get the vision. They understood what he was trying to accomplish and pretty much the journey he was about to embark on. And that's the thing, you said the evolution thing, right? Through all his music, you could always see his evolution in every mixtape. You said you followed him since day one and to see him at this height. You probably never expect a street rapper to get there. Yeah. You know what I mean? I think Jay Z is one of the only people who we know who actually. I mean, maybe Jeezy. No, it's kind of like getting there, but it's just like it's just um it's pretty good to see a guy come from the streets and then basically invest in so many things in his life and so many things that benefits him and his family. So, like you said, the evolution is really a big key. Yeah, so. Well, I could be I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure uh, it one it started well. He pretty much had the epiphany when he went back to um, his home Sorry. roots in uh, Eritrea. If, if I'm pretty sure that's how you pronounce it. I could be wrong. But he said once he went back home, he started, he realized what he needed to do. Was it like his... Uh, that's, where his dad, that's where his dad's from. Was it his grandmother or great grandmother? No, his dad, his dad is Eritrea. Yeah. No, I mean where, who he went, like, because he, I know he went to see family. Yeah. But it was... His, his dad's side of the family. Yeah. All the elders. Yeah, it's just a, and that's like, um, like, like you said, the message is just like going back home, learning your roots, discovering who you are. Like that's like a real wake up call for anybody, right? You go back, you see where a part of yourself 
that you never got uh, got to experience, and that probably that can propel you to a, level, a next level in your life, which it did for him. And I think his message is really just knowing yourself, and that was a really big turning point for him in terms of like all of his uh, philanthropy that he started to embark on as well as just as a man. And that's why his passing hurts so much to mm -hmm. the to the community of uh, Los Angeles and to the rap community in general. Yeah. Because of what he was about to do and the things that he was trying to do. Because he was transcending from music itself. Yeah. Yes. Like he was basically just doing so much more. And you can see in his message that it, like, it didn't stop at music. It was gonna. It was gonna stop at more than one thing. And I will be the first one to say, "Victory Lap" was my album of the year. I, I highly agree with that. And like, I think I think he should have won album of the year, but uh, he's still my album of the year, man. The Grammys yeah. don't need to validate. The Grammys don't need to validate anything no, for me true. anymore, unfortunately. I mean, nomination is just as good as getting a freaking award nowadays. So, true. but it was the fact that this was his first <laughs> debut album. release. Oh yeah, this was his only studio album. Everything else was yeah. Everything so else was every, EPs everything else is an album, but on the industry level, this was this his was first, first mainstream mainstream album. It still, it still felt like a uh, Nipsey Hussle mixtape, which was amazing. And I liked that each video he did for each uh, single he had off the album, mm -hmm. he shot it as if it was a, mo a short film a short or film. a movie. Yep. Like he had a vision that I feel a lot of artists need to follow. Need to follow. Need to follow. Because he had his own blueprint. He didn't need anybody to tell him what he needed to do. He already knew what he needed to do. And uh, another thing I like about him is that he employed and got the people around him mm -hmm. into better situations and mm -hmm. better spots in their life. And another sad thing that happened was, I'm pretty sure you guys all know that, the reason why he was at his store, well, he's always at his store, but one of the main reasons why he was at his one store that day, friends. one of his close friends just got out of jail. I'm pretty sure he For did. 20 years. He was in there for 20 years. 20 years. He yeah. wanted to, he wanted to hook him bit. up. Yeah, he wanted to hook it's him up with some bit. gear to see his family. And then, sadly, Man, that nice. situation happened. I mean, other people have their theories on what it was over, but nobody really knows. Yeah. How you feel about it? Do It was a hard one for me, honestly. I still haven't really, uh, I guess, found a way to process the grief and it's weird for me because I didn't know, right? Like, but I knew him. The left four strings and then yeah, actually. Like, the music that he put up pretty much told you I should listen to this guy. Like, he has something that he has to say, and that's that means something. Yeah. Sorry to cut you off. No, it's all good, man. Um, yeah, like I, I still am confused about my feelings because like we'll be at work and like you know Nip will come on and he'll be like hey turn that shit up that's my shit and I'm like please turn it off <laughs> it's hard man I, I have no idea why it's hard but it's hard I guess he was just one of those people like special generational people he could not he couldn't ignore his his, his role right like that's yeah, what it was wrong. that's what it was like that's what we're here for and to be able to find your purpose like he was 33 man like it's crazy Young he was 33 to be so accomplished but like not accomplished as in like accolades but accomplished as a person mm -hmm. like your specific purpose that was his purpose undeniably and he was, and he was just getting his stride he was just getting yeah. going all in all the marathon continues no Tim you got anything to say bro um, well, for me, I didn't really feel any grief for myself personally. Yeah. For me, I felt more disappointment because I knew what he was yeah. doing, and yeah. then I also knew that it would be hard for all of you guys, for all of you guys to listen to this. Because yeah. like you guys, I was talking about him and his album, so I kind of cut Nip at the end. So Victory Lap is when I cut Nip. Mm -hmm. So that's when I started to get to know him. So I don't have the longevity that you guys have, only yeah. attachment. So I didn't feel as much pain, but there was definitely like immense disappointment because oh, I, I knew what he lie. was going with, what he was trying to do, what he stood for other than music. And then that was just like, when I saw it, I was just like, but I don't feel like the grief. It kind of, it's um, like, it was, like uh, my family went away and I had this place to myself. And like, it, it, like knowing that happened, and then it kind of made me sit in the mirror and kind of like, 
look at myself and not just as who I am or who you guys knew I am. It's kind of like look at myself as a black man. Like, you know, like I can't, this is just like I just can't see, I couldn't see um, Cordell doing such amazing, amazing things, not only for himself and his family, but for my kids, your kids, everyone's kids in the community, and then adults at that, and then I'd be the person to take his life. Yeah. If that, you know, if that's the real story, you know, it's just like, that would hurt me, to, it hurt me because I didn't want it to be us. I didn't want to be a black man. I, I didn't want to be anybody, really, but right, I just didn't like, want to see a black face involved in taking another black successful man's life. I'm tired of seeing it. That yeah, really, I'm really, tired that really hurt me, man. Because so when I first heard it, I was thinking that maybe he was doing something and he got shot by no, man, someone it was just, else. Because like, they just said he was shot. They didn't say he was shot by. I yeah, didn't but think I, it was it someone else. It was like six times, and I was just like, but other than that, it just makes you just want to look in the mirror and just... I like just put yourself out there and look at yourself. It's okay, so this man accomplished all this stuff. Okay, now what can I do that's going to benefit my friends and my family? True. I swear, like it was like a wake up call for me. It made me think. Like I start talking to people who really follow him, like reflect him and stuff like that. Like trying to meet with these guys and talk. Obviously, the time we didn't get, well, I didn't get a chance to actually meet with them, but we will talk about bettering the youth in our community, getting away from these types of things. I mean, like. Success is a proper thing for young black men. I will say it like that. I feel like every black man it's an essential thing. Essential, even better. Consider should be successful. Should be successful. You should be going for success. The fast money is cool. Whatever. But you can get fast money being a successful person. And it starts with, with breaking the cycle. Breaking the cycle and you know who you are. You can't break the cycle if you don't know who you are. Know who you are, know your strengths, know your weaknesses. But work on your strength before you go and try to work on your weaknesses because you can use your strengths for anything. Really, like, oh, you guys are here right now. You guys have so many strengths that I don't have, but we're a collective, we're a collective group and we're all using these strengths right now yeah. to make this thing happen. Like, I asked him to be, to be behind the camera because I was chasing this guy for a camera for like two or three years, so I'm going to assume that he's good with a camera. And he took the position and he's doing fine with it, obviously. Yeah. And then this dude right here, you know, he can edit videos. I can't do it. He's editing videos, right? Try. This guy right here provides really good information to me. And it challenges me to, to go do more research because he has a good mind to retain a lot of stuff that he reads about and hears. So this guy's very informative. And you as well can create art and logos and design anything with your mind. I mean, I can do a little bit of that too, but I'm not on your level. That's what I mean. It's just like... You, you guys are focusing on your strengths, and I'm more so of a motivation. I'm using your, you guys to motivate me to make my life better. And I kind of like Nipsey was like, Nipsey was almost like my friend, and I didn't even know him. You know, so it's, it's, it's a great wake-up call, but it comes at a sad and a tragic uh, loss. I mean, I just wish he didn't have to die for me to actually think about all that stuff and realize that stuff. Do we, um, do we feel like it was a sacrifice? Like, do we feel like people in those positions actively sacrifice themselves? Like, is it like something that you, because I know you can't ignore your, your, your path, your destiny, whatever it is you believe in, you know, the universe is going to pull you in the direction you have to go. But, like, he didn't have to do those things. That's true, man. He could have just been the same shit that we he are enjoying, stayed, right? He could have bettered his family. He could have stayed in L.A. Like, he was doing global things for black people. Mm -hmm. Not like specific groups, like yeah. you know. So do we do we think that it's a sacrifice? I don't think that's a sacrifice at all. Because like you said, he could have not done it at all. Mm -hmm. But it would be more of a sacrifice if he kept all of this good to himself, and then the same thing had happened. Maybe would have never known selfless of anything. <clears throat> so he was in selfless. a way selfless. He was spreading his love for himself and his family to everybody. Mm -hmm. So he basically said, "This is my street." I'm going to treat my street like my family. I'm going to give you all the love I have. Even if that means I have to spread it between everybody. Yeah. And it, because of that, like you said, it puts you in the limelight. So you're the big person spreading the, all the love. So everyone sees you. You're this beacon. And then when yeah. something comes, unfortunately, Gotta step stop, forward, it's man. just a big hit. He, tra he transcended from being just another gang member. Like when he first came out, he didn't rep L.A. He repped. 
his set. Smiling and Crenshaw and his set. <laughs> <laughs> it was the Rolling Sixties. Rolling Sixties. But as man. time progressed, like he even um, credits Rick Ross for Rick his Ross. yeah for just for the mind state of being self-made ownership, and then because of that, he went from being just another gang member to pretty much a boss. Owning when businesses. You a, when you put a, a thousand CDs and you sell them over 24 hours at a price tag of 100 bucks, yeah. you got really to really, really gotta believe in your craft at that point. And he did that because he wanted to bet on himself. Yep. And the next year he did the same thing for mailbox money. Yeah. 100 a CDs for a thousand bucks, for a thousand bucks a piece, if, my, if I'm correct with the numbers. Yeah. And that sold to him, so, oh man, G. It's just, uh, he did a lot of great things, not just, but like, as you go back to what uh, Golo said, um, a sacrifice. I just don't think you think about that in that aspect. I mean, like yourself, like you're a part of Strive to Reach, and like um, the more you get involved with helping kids and communities, the more people see you doing things. You're not thinking of yourself for being at the forefront. You're just, I'm just giving back. Yeah. I'm just being nice. And then you start doing other things like to invest in yourself. Like obviously you can sing, so that you can take that somewhere. You can take. You're just information as well, like this podcast that you're speaking on could go somewhere and you can generate a source of income or, or a source of beneficial things for you and people who surround yourself. And then, you know, you don't look, you never look at yourself as a sacrificial individual when you go for what you really want. Like, yeah. You want to see success in people and you, and especially your own people. That's what yeah. you want to see success in. So I don't think he was thinking that I'm stepping up and putting my life on the line. But, I, like I said, I listen to a lot of, uh, motivational speeches, uh, speakers, and they allow them to say that you got to live and die for your dreams, and I hate to say that that goes so well with what happened with, with Nips. It's, 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 yeah, it's, like, it's almost like a, like a, a, a love story. It's, yeah, it's, like, it's a love story, right? It's, and like he said, like when he heard about it, he said he had to go to go chat, he had to go write about it, and I had to write about it, and I was just like, I just... I, I cried. I was like, yeah, like, tears, I'm like, man, I'm shedding tears with people I don't even know, man, but... We so we so heavily we we really heavily invest our emotions in rappers and celebrities because we want to we look up to them we want to see them do such great things for just us because we all reap the benefits right. Yeah. Well, for <laughs> me, it wasn't just just about him being an artist. It was about the impact of the things that he was doing. That's yes, that he had. Mindset. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We just we lost a very, piece, very important piece. So, like you said, I don't. I don't think it was. I don't think he thought about it as a sacrifice, but I mean, it's it's kind of. I don't know how to really. I don't know if I can agree to just for years. Just sacrifice has like a negative connotation when you say like sacrificial. Or, yeah. But I just we we see we see the story so many times. Um, this story is different. No, this this story is definitely different. It's definitely we different. see the story so many times with entertainers who get to a position, a level, a pedestal. And they don't help. Like obviously we don't know the ins and outs of what people do in their philanthropic endeavors and you know charities, what have you. But they're not on the ground like Nick was. Yeah. Right. You don't see them. You don't see them. And sometimes it's good to not see sometimes things. Sometimes it's not good to be. Because you loud. find out later on. Yeah. Sometimes it's not good to be loud about your, your, your actions. Mm -hmm. But you know, it's like comparatively to somebody like Drake. Whom does things? I would say in a similar flashy fashion. Fashion, but he lives in Calabasas. Yeah, like he's not in his community still. There, so, but not there as uh, yeah. Nip, Nip was. I'd say his community doesn't need help. <laughs> but yeah, I guess that's a bad comparison. You're right. But, I don't really think LA needed that much yeah. help until LA really LA needed this. Certain areas. Yeah. But he was well respected with the Bloods and the Crips because of what he was doing. He united the game. He, o he only employed uh, people who from jail who couldn't get jobs. Wow, that's pretty and he good. paid them more than minimum wage. Wow. I didn't know like he was, he I was, didn't know that, man. That's what I mean. It's yeah, like, man. Like he, he was, he was doing some things. Like little, little things like that. Like you get out of jail, you can't find a job. Nope. No, you can't. Especially with this complexion in America. <laughs> Maybe he'd be here still. If you wouldn't in jail with this complexion, you would have to be good. How do you feel about it, bro? Do you think it was a... Do you think it was like a sacrifice or... I don't think so. You don't think so? I, th I mean, honestly, all the points you guys made are great, great valid points. Yeah. I mean, but I, I just don't think it was. 
Yeah, so I mean, like, it's not, just, we, we all don't think it was a sacrifice, but, like, we don't know what he was thinking or how he was feeling. But at the same time, it's a really good question, man. But at the same time, from different views, from different, different angles, yeah. it may come off that way yeah. to some people's perception, but, I mean, it's an unfortunate situation. Damn. Very unfortunate. He didn't know that was going to happen. No, I mean, yeah, you know that was going to happen. To, uh, to sacrifice yourself is to be aware that you're going to end your life. Pretty much. Like, he didn't know that he was going to do what he's been doing. But see, that's the sad. Like, he's been going, he was going to help somebody. So he wasn't going, saying, oh yeah, I'm going to go and die. Or I'm going, I'm probably going to die tonight. Yeah, yeah, but I, I don't think, think it's that literal. Like, I don't yeah, think, I don't think he was thinking like that. I don't think he like that. it like that way. But, like, it's but almost like... Same, but at the yeah. same time, there was rumors that he was saying that he heard, or he had a feeling someone was trying to kill him. But again, you can't take that. It's too weird. You can't might, take it too literal because it's, it's too many different stories. Like it's too many different stories coming out, so you yeah. don't know what's true. My elders always pick up weird fake. signs, like your eyes are really wide before the day you die, or you'll say something like, like that sounds really weird to like a random person before you die. Like yeah. a lot of elders say that to me, and I, I never thought. But he, he put out a, crypt, a cryptic uh, tweet, tweet about something, and I was like. Uh, on that, that ties into it, but you know. On that not, note, like, um, yeah, I don't the, know if that was. I that. believe the tweet was having enemies is a blessing. Oh, right. Hidden powerful enemies is a blessing. Yeah, powerful. But, but that, the reason that, that, yeah, sorry. that's not the guy. That's not the guy who shot him. The reason why he put uh, it just came out. The reason why he put that message out was because uh, he linked up with a rival gang member from the Pyrus, uh that he had beef with in the past. And that guy, I'm pretty sure, I don't know if he just got out of jail, but they just happened to run into each other at a restaurant. And they resolved it. Like, they resolved it. That's, that's the reason why he made that message, because he wanted to stay, he wanted to put a rest to that beef, the obviously, game the game and problem. the beef between the Bloods and the Crips. My brother went home, home did all his homework. Jeez, I have been expecting this. My boy got all the info. Yeah, so people <laughs> misconstrued that, uh, that tweet. They oh, thought yeah, that tweet it, was because of... What, what happened, happened yeah. but it wasn't it was because he mended fences with somebody that he had prior issues to in the past and they were also going to uh work on music Sheesh. what about like just to continue on the sacrifice the way that we the way that we say you know like uh purposeful people behave differently than others and like Sometimes we feel that maybe he did know that, you know, it was like a... Something was going to happen. Like, he, just, he was just moving like if he didn't have time, you know what I mean? And people said that Pac moved that way before he passed and, like, recorded a lot of music and did a lot of things. And we know that whenever a black person tries to educate us and help us and help us flourish, it's almost like your days are numbered. So I guess that's where my thinking was when I said sacrifice because it's almost like I knew that where it was. Do we think um, do we think staying in the hood is like the way to go that route? You think staying in the hood or leaving and like doing it from farther away? I'm doing it from farther. If I'm as successful as I picture myself being, if I'm putting myself in Nipsey Hussle's shoes, I'm living away. No, I, I can still live in LA, but I'm further away from. Crenshaw, and wherever I have my businesses, I mean, I check in when I have to check in, but I don't want to be there on a frequent basis. I don't want to be, I don't want to have to be there every week. Because like, you can't control the people who come in in and out of that store, you don't know who's really coming in that store, and then he's united, um, he has, well, he, his intentions were to unite gangs. And I hate to say, whenever you unite gangs, there's always some person in those gangs who don't agree with the people coming together. There's always that. There's always that. There's always, always, because it's always, it's always that one person is like, nah, man, we gonna go check but, that. But, like, but the one who killed him. Right? Like, you yeah. lose your identity, right? You lose your identity. Yes, like, oh, no, he didn't, went this, he didn't went this way. He didn't turn to a civilian, basically. You know, but he's not in the streets no more, so we're not gonna, you know, I mean, and it's all for the better. But some people don't ever want to go because they love the guns and butter. So true. I would suggest, I suggest, me personally, I'm working from a fire. But I will come when I need to. I will be there when I need to be there. So what about the people that say you ain't you ain't about yours because you ain't you ain't there? But if you think know. if you think about it, 
what's always that type that says that? It's always the people that oh, just don't. From jealousy, it's always the people that just either jealousy, like you said, or the people that just don't want to leave the environment there because yeah, they're just see, too, but the people too that comfortable you don't, with that environment. Those are the people that you don't you don't care about. You don't care to because you worry about the people that you want to make happy, like who are gonna who are gonna learn from whatever you put into the environment. And you're always gonna have those people on your side yeah, to say, yes. hey, you, to to do what you gotta do, you gotta get out. You gotta you gotta go somewhere else. You gotta go further away because you're always gonna have. Leeches or people just holding you back just so they can eat. Yeah, it's like, like my people, if I'm doing something incredible for my people, I'm going to expect my people to stand for me, but not stand where they have to put their life in the way, but just just anything like that. Just, you know, there's going to be one person who's going to agree with you not being there, but then there's going to be others who's, who's going to understand why. And I mean, like if I'm, if, if I'm doing all these things that are beneficial for my neighborhood, why do I have to be present all the time? You guys have this stuff at your your disposal. You can do whatever you want that's going to benefit you, and I'm giving this to you. You're giving to them. You're giving to them. You're giving to them. So I don't feel like I'm that one person, although it's felt a collective group of people. Was just I just don't think it's you'll be there the, nece the, the necessary time you have to be. I don't think I have to be there for those select individual people. Because what are you going? You want me to come and say what? Why do you really need me there that badly? Like, my foundation is there, you know, the, whatever we build is there, the facility yeah. is there. Because I mean, you're always going to have, at the end of the day, you're always going to have a hand. Yeah, if I got a business store there, my manager is there. The owners, you don't never see the owners, man. <laughs> like, you don't never um, see the owners in business. For me, my thinking is the reason why it's like that is because of years of... Cycle. Cycle, like, for all says cycle, and then, but I'm thinking politicians will go to neighborhoods that didn't get much attention when they're on their runs. So people are used to politicians coming in yeah, and pretending to care, catering to what they need, giving them all the stuff, always showing up in the community for a little bit, and then after yeah. they get elected, never come back again. But people until have, someone people, complains. Until, until someone complains, and then they'll come back and say, oh yeah, he's been here, because they're only, yeah. it's like current. But people and have like, to realize that. that for so long. People have to realize that when someone is really working hard and giving back to the community, yeah, they're working see. hard, so they don't have the time to be president. Exactly. You know what I mean? It's like you don't see you, you don't, don't see, you don't see the owner of Starbucks in Starbucks every day. You don't see him in McDonald's. Yeah, I don't see the McDonald's owner, man. You don't, you don't see the owner of Walmart every day because yeah, I only did. So I don't understand why we always expect each other to to stay. I just be appreciative, be be appreciative. So and just like Demarty said, people, I find people expect way too much from somebody who's already doing mm -hmm. more way than they much. actually should. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or not way too much, because I don't want to see. Well, that. yeah, no, not way too much, we, but... We're saying that we don't deserve it, because... Oh, I'm just talking myself in, in yeah, his yeah, shoes, right, yeah. if I'm in that position. But, uh, yeah, I just didn't want to say yeah. that I felt like, because we deserve the world, right? Um, what do we... Like, it's not the last we're going to talk about NIP. It's not the last we're going to reflect on NIP, but just... Reflecting. Stand on a good note kind of deal with it all. Like what, we, what, does he leave with you, what does he leave us with? Me personally, he leaves not just his music, but I think for the people that maybe, I mean, hand in hand, the people that was with him from the jump mm -hmm. and the people that probably are listening to his music now, even the people that kind of got caught onto him halfway. Yeah. You, you got the message. You got the motivation. Yep. And I mean... I always say that his message was the marathon continues. It's, well, not, it's, ne it's never a sprint. Like, whatever you're going to do, whatever you want to do, man. it takes time. And as long as you follow your blueprint or the blueprint or however you want to get there, you're going to get there. Yeah. Well, for me, he will always be one of my favorite rappers. Mm -hmm. Victory Lap will forever be one of my favorite albums to listen to. And just his impact on me, uh, he made me realize that there's more that I could be doing with myself. And mm -hmm. especially when it comes down to music, I'm definitely going to look at how I approach a song, a verse, mm -hmm. subject matter. What am I talking about? Mm -hmm. Whether it's negative, positive. Listening to Nipsey and listening to Victory Lap, it showed me that there's a lot of knowledge in what we say. Yeah. And I could say something that will impact somebody that I probably never ever met in my life. But... If I can put that type of message in my music, I'm going to go for it. That's great, man. That's a great message, man. Uh, 
still a hard one, man. But I would just say that hard work beats talent overall. Every time? It always has. You know, however many tools you're blessed with, if you don't cultivate those things and nurture them, it's not good. Yeah. What about you, bro? Um, for me, I'm always going to remember that it's like a missed opportunity to watch our journey grow. Instead, I'm coming at the end. What I still got the message of what he was going for. It's unfortunate that's the only message that, everybody, that I'm going to get from him. I'm not going to see him give me more messages like we would all love for him to do. And also pretty much never quit. Yeah. Yeah, like, I mean, never be afraid of what you want to do is going to be scary. You don't know what roads you're going to go down, but you just need to continue to go down the path. Like never that. compromise either. Yeah. Um, I guess my message would be that I got from it would be... Uh, like I said earlier uh, in the podcast, it's like you gotta know yourself. You gotta know yourself before you can beat any challenge, before you can get over any wall, get through any roadblock in your life, um, get through any type of event that you're dealing with. You gotta know yourself, learn yourself, and you just gotta be ready to commit. You gotta be consistent with your work. You gotta be consistent with your drive. You gotta give maximum effort. I mean, Victory Lap is his, the last album he put out, but he's been talking about a marathon since day one. So that's why, as, as my boy said, stay on that marathon, man, because that marathon don't end until you give up on your life. And your life is as valuable as anybody. The money don't make a difference. The situation don't make a difference. You value your life the way you should. You know, so that's everything is on. Everything is on you at the end of the day, and you have to make things happen for yourself. And once you make it happen for yourself, make it better for yourself, make it better for other people around you. So I guess once you become beneficial, everyone else becomes beneficial. Yeah, benefit from and ben everyone can benefit from you. So I mean, it's a and marathon. I mean, uh, the marathon can it's a great thing. Marathon keeps you going, man. And on that note, like you said, like as long as long as you're following your path, as long as you're keeping positivity around you and the right people around you and staying away from the negativity mm -hmm. and again you can still use the negativity as motivation yeah. but I mean like as long as you're keeping just just great people around you yeah. positive inspirations and just solid role models there's nothing really you can't do yeah. rest in peace and everything else man young black kid be forever loved be forever missed I love him man I didn't even know him, but I love him man it's, it's crazy so that's my job. We're gonna end that one on a good note, man. Uh, you wanna shout out your shirt? Yeah, oh, sorry, um uh Alex Ross, Cooney Ross, my boy hit me with the family of fame t shirt. He's been having this he had this going for about I think a few years now. Um I hit him up uh recently, uh, just uh last weekend maybe and um he approached me with a good mindset. He's a community guy as well, driven by uplifting his own people, and this is why he developed the product. This was a Black History Month special, so he had a few left. I saw one, he happened to have a large for me. He also gave me a free hat. But I mean, you throw this podcast, um, hopefully I'm going to, if I can afford it, <laughs> I'm going to be um, wearing local gear. Uh, if not every episode, at least I'll try to wear as much as I can. Every second episode, you'll see with some local gear on. I mean, come on, man. I, I, we support Nike, Puma, Adidas, and everyone else so much. I mean, it's good to have some local stuff on by young black men and older black men, whoever. I mean, I'm not just going to just uh, pause off it just for young black men. I mean, local gear is local gear. Protect the black dog. Yeah, man. But the black dog looks pretty good, and uh, I'm happy that my 25 bucks went to his company. And he gave me a hat that I kind of misplaced, but I found it. So uh, I'm really bad with hats, so forgive me, buddy. But I appreciate the product. He's actually one of the guys who wants to sit down with us too and sit down and uh, have a conversation. Him amongst many other people, he gives his feedback on the podcast as well. He checked it out. So shout out to Alex Ross, man. Hit him up, Family of Fame Clothing Company. He was also a part of the uh, was it peaceful protest. Yeah, peace, uh, peaceful street, protest street of um, banning the street checks. You know. Um, Blacks in Nova Scotia get pulled over twice as many times as any other race here in the city. So they started protesting their community. I went, I think, went alongside Barrington. Could have been further, further uh, Barrington, and uh, they did a big. Uh, him and uh, Trey Clayton. I think there was other people that I really don't know, but 
it was impressive to see the community band together and kind of like get these taken, get these things taken care of. Cause honestly, man, I hate getting pulled over by the police, man. <laughs> so we like one time, one time was pulling, was pulling up from um, our community, and I got pulled over because um, my lady's license plate says Jarmuth, and I was like, I'm looking at him like I didn't say it because I was she's in the car, like Robert don't really clash, but it's just like. Um, so because I have a Yarmouth license plate, that's a reason to pull me over. Well, yeah, no, it's a lot of stuff been going on. I'm like, I get that, but I mean, you can't just pull a random person over because they have a different license plate. Like, yeah. You know, but I mean, that's right, that's not a, that's not a, I guess, and, I, and shout out to them, man. That's a good job, man. Hopefully I'll never get pulled over. <laughs> okay. uh, also, on Trey, um, he was a part of shedding light to an issue that happened in was, he was in the Parliament Building? Parliament Building, um, I believe so. He was originally profiled. I don't know the full story, forgive me. Yeah, we gotta get out the information to yeah, yeah, I was trying to find the article because I had saved it, but you know, Facebook doesn't put anything in order, so I just got a bunch of saved. Well, you know what, you're fucking terrible, man. I didn't make the program, <laughs> but yeah, like, like he was saying, yeah, it happened at Parliament Building, like he got, there was a group of them together, and I oh, guess yeah. they were just hanging out, and then they got racially profiled, like, and then like, Got security came and asked them to, to leave, leave. I honest. believe. To go black city and stuff like that. But yeah, no, he um he put that story out there, Facebook, uh, Twitter, Instagram, wherever he could put it, and then the countless shares um, developed attention to get to our prime minister Justin Trudeau, and it kind of pushed him to <laughs> come have a sit down with blacks from all the communities, really. So. Yes. For the first time. <laughs> for the first time, a prime minister has a prime minister has stepped into the black world, <laughs> and we call that was that a big step, a mild step, or was that a, uh, that's like putting it? I know that's, that's like putting your toe in cold water to see the cold, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's like, you know, you know, you know those blinders when you when you flip one down, you look like <laughs> oh, well, no. I mean, good work, good work, Trey, man. You did a good thing, and everyone else that was involved at the Black Cultural Center, that's a good thing. That's amazing work, man. Shout out to you guys. Shout out to you guys for sure. All right, next topic. Your boy. Oh shoot! So the fam, the fam, the <laughs> fam. Um, I'm not. I'm not really as close with him, but family. Um, his dad and my mom are brothers and sisters, but. His dad is an amazing guy. Um, Lindo Wiggins. Lindo, the NBA. Quite some money. You take on hey, just the kid for the NBA draft. <laughs> It's just uh, it's, it's, it's a big it's, move, it's, man. It's a big move, like for. Mm, and now we got teams that are interested in him, and one of them teams is Miami Heat. <laughs> 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 hey, he let you go. Hey, yo, hey, yo, he, he, hey, yo, he, hey, yo, he retiring, man. So we need a point guard. So you know what? I mean? I'm just, so I'm just, I'm just gonna ask. So after, if he does go to the Heat, are you gonna get his jersey? Good damn skinny. <laughs> 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 If I ain't got the cash, credit card, and make you last. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta make sure I caught that. So yo, I'm putting it out there in the world. Go to Miami Heat, we ain't got my good, we just let us bum ass go. <laughs> Drogic is not gonna opt we don't want him. We want you, we need you. Come to the spot. And I mean, it'd be good because it'll be, like, be the first game. No Scotian? Yeah. Yeah, yeah man, that's, that's, that's impressive, yeah. man. The work effort to see this little guy go from a little squirt up to 6'3", playing with Giants is, is pretty cool, man. It's pretty cool. And his family kind of kept him strict when yeah, I was passing basketball. That, I mean, well, I guess all of you guys, aside from me, um, these you guys' family, like, when you want to talk about, like, because it's a unfamiliar story, I guess, or unfamiliar path. It's like an athletic path. Mm -hmm. Yeah. To, like, most Canadians, like, aside from hockey, I guess, right? Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Like, like, what... From the outside looking in, but still being a part of the journey, like loving from afar. Like, yeah, how it was impressive just, was that to you guys? Man, it's just uh, like obviously we watched a lot of it. I watched a lot of his games when I was on the same I team. Like as, not even that, like just oh, growing okay. up as well. Like when I was on the same team as his brother, we played on the major team as well. So they would play. They played earlier than us sometimes. So if if we got there in time to watch these guys play, and like I said to you, his skill set was obviously way better than the kids he was playing with. So. It looked yeah. easy, so you wanted to see where he would be when he got older. Yeah. A lot of people are good young, and then they get older and they don't grow as ball well, players. They, they hit their plateau, right? And he just kept. He got better. Sorry. Right, <laughs> wow. <laughs> you better than him? You better than him at one on one? Yes. 
<laughs> oh shit! Hey, hold on, yeah. There's a camera. We can record it. It's not a Yo. <laughs> but anyway, no. It's just to see the working from afar. I mean, it shout out to his dad and his brothers. It's like these guys kept him on the straight and narrow path where you need to be, and that's focus. <laughs> so, yeah, man. That's what like just really classic. His family did an amazing thing for him. I think it's um, he done. He probably definitely knows it. But well, we don't want him to have that kind of pressure, but... Well, no, they're going to go to Miami Heat. This guy. Oh, I don't know what else I'm talking about, man. He got him more specific. Well, you got to let me get to it. You just okay, got to Miami. Bad. So basically... You guys being the first... His declaring... <laughs> his declaring for the draft shows every other kid in Nova Scotia that plays basketball. That's what that I That this is where to. they can go. Union Square, North Preston, where... Uh, Wherever you play uh, golf. Cherry Brook, East Preston, uh... Am I missing it? Margaret Park. Uh, what is it? Lucasville, if you play ball in Lucasville, where all the blacks are, uh, Jelly Bean Square, uh, Caledonia, wherever you guys are playing basketball at, this is groundbreaking, man. That's, that's, that's ground. You guys can do it. And you that's what you guys can do it, man. Like a lot for music, I mean, not music, basketball in Nova Scotia. Mm -hmm. in general. That too, yeah, it sheds the light on the talent that is for me basketball in general. Kind of on the up and up. It's been a long time. Mean, it is pretty much. Mr. 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 Mr.
Yeah, I'm from Canada. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna say, I'm gonna pronounce my G and say John. I know he want a pretty big body and Giannis. <laughs> and the big shoulders he got is all the way over here. They are cheap. Giannis. It's impressive what he's doing, man. Like, um, I wish that they never fired Jason Kidd. I feel like yeah. maybe the team would have been in the same spot. That shit is crazy. Literally would have been in the same spot. Jason Kidd is responsible for his progression. It's yes. no different from uh, Mark Jackson's situation. Yes. Then the Warriors. Warriors. It's, development, and then he's it's crazy how they fire these black coaches no. that are doing a good job. Let's and then be they crazy. Only with the four rings. Coaching. Mm -hmm. get, he get me, he get me ah, easy rings. I don't know, man. You know, I'm pulling a lot of energy in the middle. You think I'm gonna be a chop? You know, people go to everybody. Cardi, when you say about the Raptors, I'm talking about these. No, the Raptors actually. I think the Raptors might can take them to a lot. You think they're gonna take them to seven games? You think Raptors sweep Philly? No. To sweep foot? No. Philly? No. Now, actually, wait a minute. It depends on how they are in the playoffs. Because no, no, Kyle right. Lowry actually can stay. Stop calling Kyle Lowry's name. No, Kawhi Leonard. That's the only person you need to be called. Kawhi Leonard is a good player. I don't need to mention Siakam because I know he's coming to play. Yeah, well, let's put it up again. OG. 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 O
Um, for, it's a good take on what Khalid does in his music realm. It, it gets a little bit of everything in there. It's a vibe. It's a vibe, yeah. yeah. I like that. That's what someone told me to do. Yeah, yeah, but a lot of the songs to me... I hope I picked that up to you. A lot of his songs sound the same, though. And that's why I said, like, still his sound. Is it easy listening, though? It's easy oh, listening. yeah, it's a good it's listen. Listening. Because he's still in his element, his lane. But, I mean, it's different when you listen to rap. Uh, like, a lot of hip-hop songs, uh, hip-hop albums now, a lot of their songs sound the same. But with because his ones sound the same. Is he like, is it's he still pop, a pop, R&B? Like, what is his rap? He's quite an alternative artist, man. Yeah, yeah. I felt like he's an alternative guy I was listening to. I couldn't really uh, pick what genre he fits in. <clears throat> Drake and Future announced W-A-T-T-B-A-T. What a time to be alive. Be alive. It's gonna be you and yours. Me and mine. Last digital one. Dash. I got the digital dash. What's the digital, what is the digital dash? Is that like views or something? Like, I think it has something to do with sports cards. I don't think you can blow money though. That's like, like, oh, oh, I do have a digital dash. What a D. He got a digital dash too. Too. <laughs> Well, I ain't got that type of money. <laughs> I got middle class uh, listen money. I ain't yeah. got that type of fucking Anderson Pack dropping an album soon, so I don't give a fuck about anybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah the album. Because the last one wasn't fucking no good. I feel like it was all old music. What do you think this one done? Ventura was fire, bro. Every song you put up by fire. Yeah. You got a song with Smokey Robinson? I was listening to it just like now. Uh, and the other song. Uh, oh, you're listening to it right now? Mm -hmm. No, like before we started. Oh. <laughs> I was. And King like, James is fire too. I mean, you, when you, when you, when you gonna miss this here one? I didn't. I mean, you won't even talk about Sweet just dropped her tape. So great. Ratchet Trap Music strikes again. <laughs> and I'll tell you, man, <laughs> for me, for Ratchetness and Rappiness, I'm giving it an 8. Ratchet and Rappiness? <laughs> I'm giving it an 8. Ratchetness, I'm gonna make that a drum. I can't even give it a Ratchet, ratchet <laughs> Music. You <laughs> didn't listen to it. I listen oh, to it. Put, oh, she had that P.D. Pablo sample on, man. Man, that P.D. Pablo sample on was fire, though. I listen to it. Shaking, man. <laughs> and told us to skip every damn song he played. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I didn't get to the P.D. Pablo. Hey, look, hey, sweetie, man, he got it. And when he played it, when he played it for more than a minute, not because you look good, it. because your music good. Um, I didn't hear nothing. <laughs> <laughs> what are we? Uh, what are we? What are we watching? What are we watching? Like anime? Like anime? What are we watching now? Um. Well, for me, yeah. I'm punch still watching uh, Shield Hero and My Cycle just finished. If you into anime, My Cycle's a really good anime from uh, the creator of One, <laughs> which is One Punch Man. Um, I just started one called Demon Slayer. Tough. This dude watches a new anime. Reading the manga, read the manga right know. now. So I take it you, you hadn't watched Goblin Slayer. I've already finished Goblin okay, Slayer, okay. so did, I didn't want. But Goblin Slayer is a little bit. It's a little bit. Darker, like you can't just go jump into God. Too much on. for Swift. There's a lot. Of, there's about four X's you need to add on the God say before you recommend that to somebody. God say X X X. Yeah, yeah no, 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 no. It's front door. It's, it's not. It's not the way I'm thinking. I'm saying it like that because there's some. Well, you got one You got one anime. <laughs> Yo, we have to go with anime. Why? This guy here watch. This guy here watch anime porn. And any anime porn just has some some really touchy subjects in it oh, that like hard for people to watch. So like, take a tap on Titan. Oh, I'm telling you, don't think you're pulling your head off. Okay, now, watch that. Now, yeah, people can crush the rocks. People can crush the rocks. Now, your head. No, so why can you trip on some cutting someone's head off? Also, I don't want to. Watch it for yourself. <laughs> and you'll see what I mean. Now I'm good. <laughs> okay, then. Nah. They're getting busted. I'm still, still, I'm still reading that. Uh, my Hero Academia. Good. That number is going to be fire. Uh, Comic like Greatest of All Time. We still didn't watch that movie. Yeah. We still didn't watch that movie. Fire. Um, I hate you. You just watch everything, man. Sauna. <laughs> <laughs> what, what movie? Inferno. <laughs> what movie? Uh, my Hero Academia movie. Kind of it's like about All Might and when he was... Before he started it, studying it, underground. It already came out? Yeah, yeah before he started losing weight. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's just disrespectful. Oh, when he went to America. <laughs> I'm also watching uh, Shadow, which is pretty cool. Oh, that's and, good. Uh, Based on South Africa, man. I, I finished that. So. You like it, man? Well, I didn't, so... Yeah, just <laughs> <laughs> no, the great thing I like about that, um, that on Netflix, I like about the simple fact is all new cast. I've never seen any of these. Yeah, right. I like the that. The scenery is very different. I've never yeah. seen the scene. Well, obviously because it's, in, it's in South Africa. Kind of it's kind of South Africa. I don't know if it's actually filmed in South Africa. But it's right? in Cape Town. It's actually. Oh, that's pretty cool. It's really, it's really cool environments. Uh, it's giving me like a black Batman vibe, like yeah, very crime heavy. But not too much on the forensic side, more just on like the action, like investigation side. Yeah, vigilante 
Yeah, I enjoyed it. And I mean, it's all black people, so like, I could really like it. Yeah, um, what am I watching right now? Uh, <laughs> I've been watching Game of Thrones like a mug. Oh my god. And the kill, the kill streaks on that? Yo, like that. Uh, I see why people. I see why a lot of people like it. I see why it's like one of the most popular shows. I see why a lot of people don't want to watch it. And don't want to like it because there's a lot of incest not, in that show. It's only one couple. A lot of uh, it's only one sibling. Dude. And then no, man, it's, it's two. <laughs> it's, it's two. I'm not gonna spoil it, but it's more. Uh, I mean, it's all spoilers. It means it's fucking old. I mean, it's a whole, it's a whole generation of incest going on. Exactly. Cause you keep you, you keep your family name alive. So it's all oh, you might have it. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, it's uh, now I like it more. Start note, it was a slow burn for me, man. I couldn't stand the shit, but I just kept watching, man. Something not too bad. I'm watching that, I still didn't finish the Punisher yet. God damn it. Uh, pretty good, uh, and uh, yeah, that's all I'm really into right now. I know the whole damn world is watching Game of Thrones, so why does it even matter? <laughs> Final season. Final season. I guess I'll be on time. I still watch that to everyone else. Watch that. I watch that like, later on. Um, <clears throat> yeah, what you watching? Cool. I need that top, bro. Fuck. You watching cool? Sad man. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yo. Nah. hey yo, wait, wait, my boy boss back in. Anyway, you guys see that new Joker trailer? Trash. trash. What? Hey, you trash. Trash. What are you guys tweeting? Trash. Garbage. What's garbage? Why do you think it's trash, though? Okay, you gotta explain what's me why you think it's trash. Yeah, tell me why it's trash. It just didn't pique my interest. Is it because of this, they're doing a story with a Joker who doesn't have a story? <laughs> <laughs> Is it because they're doing a story? I'll tell you, man. I know it hurt, too. I know his stomach boom, boom in the deep like a bell. <laughs> But yeah, why you don't like it though? I don't get it. I just don't like it, man. You gotta have some years, man. Why, why you don't know, like it? It, it? Literally nothing about the trailer like just made me invest in continuing to watch. It's just a so, it's just the thing about it like the, me like the Rogue One Star Wars movie, it's just a standalone Joker movie. Ah, it just doesn't appear for me. No, no like, man, it might be good. No, it's not even anything I, about that. It's just the trailer itself did not interest me. What, 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 what is the premise? <laughs> the ribs or nothing didn't like. The <laughs> vertebrae didn't. didn't what appear. is the premise of it though? It's the Joker. He just doesn't have a solid origin story. So that's what they're trying to create. Origin one. story is written. It's different. So they're I trying think, to create one. I think this or I think the DCU. I think this origin story is the the one that they're doing is um. The one where he's a failed stand-up uh, comedian. Yeah, comedian, and basically he then tries to join the mob, and I guess his family or his wife, his pregnant wife, so they're doing someone kills so someone kills him, and then he basically they the, the mob forces him to continue, and they follows him or whatever, and then whatever. But I mean, I, I don't know what. How, I just don't get how. I just don't know how. It looks interesting, but I don't know how I'm going to follow the story of a mass. Yeah, of a killer, like I'm not gonna kind of follow the story of a killer like that I mean, whole hour. I mean, fifty nine minutes of someone just slaying people. I mean, like, I follow the story. For a bit, but. I mean, we still follow. Well, we invested a lot in the Dark Knight. Batman didn't kill nobody. Not Batman. <laughs> he definitely killed specifically, he but definitely he did. But now that I know, that I see the Joker. I mean, oh, yeah. in those movies, like we were invested, we wanted to see what he was doing because he was just he's just a charismatic character. Yeah, if done properly, you can feel for a villain. Yeah, yeah. that's what I mean. So that's what I mean, I think Thanos. <laughs> I didn't. Oh, I don't I mean, know. When he, when, he, when he got the Deweys, then I was the waves in the Deweys. <laughs> <laughs> and when you got that thing wrecked, right? you didn't uh, see him with the slick back, did you? Yeah, you, can't, you can't zoom in on this yet, though, can you? I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> that type of wave, man. You got a leg, leg, leg over here, man. Let's do this thing. Like a blast from the past or a childhood coming back, uh, Aladdin and like. <laughs> you can't get our cheek. I mean, you're most supposed to go to the genie. <laughs> Aladdin, Lion King. It looks looking. terrible. Dumbo. Think kind of like nothing. Dumbo. It looks like a fucking blue pill. Like <laughs> <laughs> so, the, so the first trailers that they put up was fucking trash. It was good for me. But the most recent one, which they should have put up the first time, looks is amazing. fire. I don't know if you've seen it, but it's actually fire. I don't care about that movie, but Lion King. Pretty good. I'm ready. <laughs> Why are you guys so I never watched back? the original Aladdin either. Though. Cause true. What? You, you never watched the Lion King? King? Well, not the original Aladdin. I saw TV it. shows. I never watched it. What? Because at the same TV time, Mega Man and Sonic came on. Bro, I thought we know, hey, Mega Man, I don't even know about the Mega Man fucking fuck TV show. I ain't gonna lie. And Astro Boy. So you've never seen the movie Aladdin? Oh, so I've seen the same movie. Yeah, but we had Return of Jafar, which is the second one. We got Aladdin cassette tapes. 
No, we have. We only have two. Just, we only have two. We don't have the first one. Sentence. I don't want to go to jail on that. The soundtrack. I said, remember? Live a life for so many years. You remember Jasmine or that? I remember Jasmine. I'm saying we don't have the first Aladdin movie. We have the other two. Arabian Night? Yeah, you can download it, right? I just don't really have an interest to see it. Where are you crying? Well, I guess that's a wrap for quarter past four. <laughs> Thank you guys for tuning in, man. We really appreciate it. Next episode, we're going to bring some more exclusive and boring. Let's go. <laughs> social media boring. Huh? Social media? Social media? Oh, yeah. So you can see us on SoundCloud. Hopefully, we can get Spotify up soon. We have a YouTube. We have a Facebook. And we have a Twitter. Instagram? And then we have also an Instagram. You want to shout out your handles and stuff? Uh, before well, you shout out your handles, can you tell them what our handle is? <laughs> Nice. <laughs> <laughs> well, I handle this quarter past four, and that's, you know, I mean, similar across all platforms. Uh, my personal handle for my Instagram is Doc Smith's Art. <laughs> Uh, it's kind of loud. I ain't got too many. I ain't got too many stuff. Uh, snap, my Snapchat is Dolo Dash Dixon. Demario uh, Dixon on Facebook. I don't have Instagram because Instagram is lame. <laughs> And Twitter at Dennis. Let's see if you can pick up this game before I say Twitter at Dennis Freefall. Hey, you gotta make sure to check my handle, man. Make oh, sure this dude, no, uh, Sky Lord the Ranger. We'll put it in the uh, one on Instagram page. Head. He has yeah, God Tier for his uh, Twitch account, and he has Featherton Sky Bow <laughs> for Twitter. <laughs> uh, 21 Beaches for their music, which is pretty amazing on Spotify. <laughs> Yeah, so I hope these guys are, because sometimes they'll do their own shit, right? You know, memory over here. The way you win! And uh, my platform is Robert Swift for every platform. Um, uh, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, Robert and Swift, just one word condensed together. Find me on anything. What's your handles, man? Uh, I have two Instagrams, uh, Calvin Glide and Calvin The Glide for, uh, for my beats. Uh, my Twitter is... Glide. Calvin Glide. My Twitter is Glide Calvin. Hey, for some reason, it, somebody it? has Calvin Glide, but uh, <laughs> we'll situate that at a later date. I gotta check you, man. You ain't following me back on Instagram, man. I'm getting my feel like them Instagram people, man. I want my follow back, man. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, when, hey, when you go home ahead and you with that follow link, man, if you don't follow me back, I'm gonna be at your door. I'm pretty sure I have a cellular device. I can do it now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, bye. <laughs> uh, see ya. Thank you, guys. Pretty show, I'm living life in a full of cool. Be cool and live comfortable. I ain't got no shame in my game, cause I'm cool in it, that's the thing. If you ain't in your own lane, you ain't gonna go far, I'm just saying. If you ain't paying attention, then you ain't learning no lessons now. Okay, huh, back up and just wait. Think about it, okay? Do you got enough room to make way? She peeking at you, so peek back, it's game time, gonna win.